Uh, now, we were just talking there about Labour's uh, deputy leader, uh, Tom Watson, and the review into his uh, position. Uh, Mr Watson, of course, has been an outspoken critic of the leader, Jeremy Corbyn, on both anti-Semitism and uh, Brexit. An initial plan this week to abolish the deputy leader's position was, if you believe reports in the Sunday Times, orchestrated by Jeremy Corbyn's senior advisers, Carrie Murphy and Seamus Mill, Momentum founder John Landsman, and according to the Sunday Times, the General Secretary of Unite, Len McCluskey. So Mr McCluskey joins us now. Now I'm keen to get your reaction to uh, Brexit and what Dame Margaret uh, was saying, but we need to first get to the bottom of what happened in this attempt to oust Tom Watson to get rid of the deputy leader position. I, Were I you involved? No, not at all. I mean, this is just another fake news. I had nothing to do with it. I knew nothing about it. Basically what it is, it's just frustration because, you see, the deputy leader of any organisation, the prime role is to assist the leader. And unfortunately, Tom gives the impression that every time he speaks, it's to undermine the leader. Now, that frustration amongst members will manifest itself. And I think that's all that happened. Jeremy Corbyn didn't know about it. I certainly didn't Did know, about know about it. Did you not know about it at all? At all. When was the first you heard about it then? The first I heard about it was when it broke in the, in the media. I knew nothing about it. And this is fake news because obviously the media are looking for a story. Is it not? Well, I mean, to be fair to the media, I mean, you would. It would be strange if we weren't reporting on this at all. No, I accept it? that, but I mean, it's gone, it's dealt with. In some ways, you know, it's a good thing because it demonstrated that Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, he stepped in, he calmed it all down, and it's yesterday's news. But the upshot of it is that there will now be a review into the position of deputy leader. Jeremy Corbyn says he wants two people as yes, deputy there's leader. Yes, there's a constant review of the structures of the Labour Party. Would you like to see two deputy uh, leaders? Uh, frankly, I, I'm... I'm ambivalent about it. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm more concentrated on the leader, Jeremy Corbyn's message, and getting him into number 10. That's what's important, not Tom Watson. While we move on to other issues, I just want to ask you about one more staffing issue. Uh, uh, Andrew Fisher, someone yep. who, of course, was really at the heart of the team, who had a big role in that election uh, manifesto that did very well for the Labour Party last time. I think I'm right in saying the only member uh, from his first leadership campaign still uh, in that office. He's decided to step down. Is that a loss? Well, he's not stepping down yet. He's not leaving us. This is another non-story. Andrew is a valued member of the team. He's still there. He'll be there in the general election that we're about to go into. So he's made it clear that family commitment, he's got a young family, and incredibly high-pressured uh, job, and he wants to, a, a better work-life balance. Good luck to him, but he's still with us. So it's not a question of him suddenly resigning in a fit of peak. He's still with us. He'll be working in the general election and he'll be a valuable member of the team. The Sunday Times says they've got a hold of a memo uh, where he says, I no longer have faith that we will succeed. He criticises the lack of professionalism, competence and human decency. I mean, I guess this is fake news again, right? Well, I mean, the reality is in a high-pressure job, there is always frustrations and they bubble to the surface. But uh, all I know about Andrew is he's a very valuable member of the team and will continue to be one. Okay. OK. Now let's talk about Brexit, shall we? Um, Labour's position on Brexit is to have a second referendum, but it won't commit to how it campaigns in that referendum. What do you want to see? Well, that's absolutely correct. I mean, the position that Jeremy Corbyn is laying before a conference this week is that when he becomes Prime Minister, he will negotiate the best deal possible and that will respect the 2016 referendum. Once he negotiates that deal, he will take it back to the people on a confirmatory vote with Remain on the ballot paper. He's also said that Labour would recall their conference to determine what position the Labour Party will take in that vote. And that's absolutely correct. Trade unions do it every single day. We negotiate with an employer, we bring the deal back, and we make a judgment with our shop stewards normally as to whether we're going to recommend acceptance or not. Perfectly straightforward, absolutely honourable, because it is only Jeremy Corbyn and Labour who are offering the whole nation. You've got the Tories who've dismissed one half of the nation, the Liberal Democrats who've dismissed the other half of the nation. It's only Labour trying to heal and mend our broken nation during this toxic debate that we've had for two years. Well, if you're the ones who are trying to bring everyone together and the others are just outriders, just look at the polls. And I accept that the polls are different, but there is a clear 
Conservative lead, and it's also clear that the Lib Dems are making gains on Labour. So why is it not that you're not doing better? But Sophie, if I take you back just two years, the polls were indicating that Labour would be wiped out. And when the election took place, we came within touch and distance of power. In fact, commentators like yourself are unanimous in the view that if that I'm election... I'm not a commentator, to be fair. I'm an if, interviewer. Sorry. If that <laughs> election had have taken place an additional two weeks, then Labour would be in power. So what happens in an election is people listen to what Labour has on offer. Not just Brexit, there are a whole host of issues that affect ordinary working people, everyday lives, investment in their communities, investment in our manufacturing sector, protecting our public services, defending the National Health Service, giving our children, our students some hope. All of those issues will be heard by people. And I believe if Labour come out of this conference with a clear Brexit policy based on what Jeremy wants, and my appeal to all delegates is support your leader, support the NEC statement, then they will see that Labour is the only party trying to heal a broken nation. We know um, that Jeremy Corbyn is going to come under pressure uh, from members, from members of the Shadow Cabinet, from backbenchers to back a Remain position. Would that be a mistake? Uh, Jeremy's already make it, making his position clear. But would that be a mistake? I think, I think the NEC statement is Jeremy's but, but, position. Come on, let, let's, no, no, what, what, would, would it be a mistake? Because reality, I know it's easy to reality, fall back on process here, yeah, but would is, it be a mistake? Uh, the, Sophie, the reality is if you're going to negotiate, and uh, there is a belief that uh, Jeremy Corbyn and Labour could negotiate a much, much better deal, the best deal from the European Union, then you only make your judgments about what you should do in the confirmation vote when you've got that. I believe that this conference will support that. Of course there are strong views about Remain, but when the arguments are put to conference on Monday, I believe they'll support Jeremy Corbyn, I believe the unions will, and I believe the constituencies will. Would it be a betrayal of the many Labour lead voters mm -hmm. well, to take a Remain position? Well, that is precisely why Jeremy Corbyn is effectively trying to say, look, we well, have to what, make an your, offer. What's your view here? I, I, you know, I, my I, know view? What, I know what Jeremy Corbyn is... What, well, well it's my view? view. My view is Jeremy Corbyn's view. We said in just two years ago, when Labour went into the general election two years ago, we said we were going to respect the 2016 referendum. Corbyn has been consistent in wanting to respond to the democratic wishes, but of course there has been a polarisation of views, and it's therefore absolutely correct that we should go back to a confirmatory vote with Remain on the ballot paper. But not campaign necessarily for Remain. Well, that will be determined when people look at the deal. I know that there is a, a, an attempt to suggest that this is a fudge or it's confusing. It isn't confusing to trade unionists. When I go into an employer to negotiate a deal, I don't say to them, well, I'm going to negotiate a deal with you, but whatever you give me, I'm going to campaign against it. I wait to see what the deal is. I take it back normally to my shop stewards, which in this case will be a recall Labour Party conference, and say, what do you think? We then make a decision as to whether we will recommend that to our members, which in this particular scenario will be the people. We, we know you're close to Jeremy Corbyn. Some portray you as a roadblock to a more explicitly Remain position from the Labour leader. I, I mean, again, that is fake news and it's nonsense. It's, it's done to try and project the image that Jeremy Corbyn is weak and is influenced by people. I've never met a stronger individual than Jeremy Corbyn. All the stuff about his age and how he's looking well, he's already seen off two Conservative Prime Ministers in David Cameron and Theresa May. And when we get a chance in the general election, he'll see a third off. Jeremy Corbyn is his own man. He makes his own decisions. What he does do, which is remarkable, he listens. He wants to consult widely. He wants to listen. He wants to bring people together. But the idea that anybody, any of his staff or people like me, uh, stop him from doing what he wants is just not true. So what's your message then to people like Emily Thornberry, people like Dame Margaret Beckett, who just heard from who would like to remain? Well, my message is to support the leader. 
And uh, do you think they're not doing that? I support the leader. We'll see when the the results of the Brexit debate comes out. I went to five fringe meetings last night, and I'm, I'm not aware of a lie. The support for Jeremy Corbyn is palpable in this conference. So You'd expect that in a conference, though, wouldn't well, you? Come on. Well, I mean, the real challenge is to speak outside the no, hall. No, no, well, the real challenge is to speak to the electorate. I accept that. But we must go into an election united. And when we have a policy on Brexit, and Jeremy Corbyn makes it clear that that is the policy, then that's what leading members of the Shadow Cabinet should argue for. If they find that they can't argue for it because they feel strongly, well, of course they have that right, but they should step aside. They step aside from the Cabinet, the Shadow Cabinet, which will become the Cabinet, and uh, they can argue whatever they want, but the policy and my appeal to them, to Emily and to anybody else, is support your leader. Emily Thornberry is a fantastic fantastic politician, she's been loyal to Jeremy. If we get to a position where Jeremy is saying, let's not make our decision on how we will campaign until we know what the deal, my appeal to her, support Jeremy. And that's my appeal to the whole of Congress. So you have an issue then with people coming out and saying, I'll campaign to remain, whatever happens? If they're in the leadership, because of course, in, in this situation of the toxic nature where, you know, the Tories have dismissed one half of the country, the Liberals have dismissed the other, in order for Labour to get through their uh, message of unity and healing our nation, everybody needs to be singing from the same hymn sheet. Now, if the leadership team, the, the, the cabinet, the shadow cabinet, soon to be the cabinet, uh, find that difficult, then yes, they should step aside. And would you blame them for perhaps uh, of course, some would... of the... Uh... The, the, the polling, you know, some of the, the people claiming that there's a lack of unity? Well, obviously, at the moment, there, there is confusion when leaders say different things. That's why if we get a clear position at this conference, everybody should commit to it. And if they can't, I don't blame them. If they want to step aside from the leadership role to argue their case, God, I, you know, I respect that, of course I do. But there has to be one clear message coming from Labour in terms of the leadership on our policies when we go into an election. Just finally, would you like to see private schools abolished? Would I like to see private schools abolished? I would like to see better education for ordinary working people. I could take you to places in inner cities around our nation where the schooling is appalling. Uh, I wouldn't want my children to go there, and it's because of the inequality that exists in education and the inequality that exists in our um, in our society in general. And Labour will put that right. The answer to your question is yes. Thank you very much, uh, Len McCluskey.